All right, let's take a look at this video. It's a short one. Um, let's just see what happens here. 10 years of speaking to atheists and I still haven't got an answer. What do I mean by that? I want to know from atheists and maybe atheists watching this can help me out. I want to know what do you want? This is so strange. This is so amazingly strange. Now, I remember 2014 or something, I bumped into a recording the other day where I was on a, on a, on a chat, on a stream with them live because they were trying to copy the gin and tonic show. So they, they tried to get people in there, but because they wanted to have this absolute control of the microphone and, and have censorship rights, they couldn't use what we were using. So they made a mess of it. Anyway, I managed to talk to them for a while and they said, well, well what are you? And I said, I am a non-believer. I don't believe gods or goddesses exist. There's no good reason to do so. So I don't. So you're an atheist. I said, well, I don't like the word atheist because there's so much baggage attached to it. So if you have to tell me what you understand, um, what, what the word atheist actually contains. And then we talked about this. And then I said, well, the, the way that it works is what I want is just for you to stop lying. And I made a short video on this, just the one sentence, stop lying. That's all I want. Now, what, what he doesn't understand is that th there is no real consequence of not believing gods exist. I don't get up in the morning and I think, oh, I, I wish there was a God. And how am I going to get through the day without a God? This does not happen. I don't think about gods or goddesses. It, it does not cross my mind. So it's not a worldview to, to have a, a non-belief in something. It's, it's the same thing as he doesn't believe that dragons exist. So it's not that, that that is going to affect his life so much. It's just that I am able to think rationally. I'm able to think honestly. I can, um, w without having a, a red line or something, research, think, um, question. I, I, I'm able to find real data. I'm, I'm able to go and analyze facts. I'm able to accept reality. So for me, truth is important. So, and, and it's not that I shy away, you know, from this red line and say, well, if I go beyond that, um, th there might be truth there, but then I'm going to have to abandon something. I don't have that. So I don't quite understand what he does not understand about this, because I think I have explained it to him. And um, the funny thing is anyone who is interested, anyone who researches, anybody who looks for these things, I've made so many videos explaining this. I've, I've made so many videos explaining that I am somebody who, who is compassionate, who have, feels empathy, who um, is, is, is more of a humanist than anything else. And I'm somebody who, you know, if, if I stand next to a crooked salesman, because he is a crooked salesman, all right, he's, he's trying to sell you something which, which is a, a really like, violent, broken, um, it's, it's a pernicious ideology that he's trying to sell you using lies and deceit. That's, that's all he has. So I'm somebody who is standing next to a used car salesman who is trying to sell an unsuspecting person a car. And I happen to be a mechanic, so I know um, I've just looked at this car because I was actually interested in this and, and I found that the brakes are shot and handbrake doesn't work and uh, the inside um, is, is pretty much worn. Um, you need to replace the gearbox, all brake discs, um, all, all around everything. And um, he is telling this, this, uh, this lay person that this is a fantastic car. And it's worth 5,000 um, pounds or, or, or euro or dollars or whatever, when it's actually 400. So do I shut up? Do, do, do I not say anything if that person says, well, you're the expert. If you tell me this, then I'm going to buy this. No, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to tell this person, look, um, take a look at the brakes. Take a look at this. Maybe get somebody else here who knows about these things, who can give you a second opinion. But I will not shut up. I, I will not let somebody, you know, be be like cheated and, and, and be drawn into something that they are later going to regret. So I speak up. I, I don't stay quiet. And that is exactly why I am talking about Islam. I, I find Islam to be the worst ideology on this planet. I find it to be dangerous, pernicious, and it's definitely not something that should be taught or that should be um, taken up in the 21st century. It, it, 
we, we want to have freedom. We, we want to be able to think about things. We want to find out ourselves and, and what this, this Subor guy is doing. Now, I've, I've critiqued several of his videos and I've shown that he really is quite clueless about anything. And it doesn't matter whether it's um, psychology, whether it's um, biology or it doesn't really matter. It, it, it's politics, ideology. He, he talks about a lot of things with a lot of confidence. And every time I look at what he says, it's totally ridiculous. So I don't know why he's doing that, but anyway, I'm not going to keep quiet. And maybe a lot of atheists will keep quiet, and a lot of, especially now the, the fashionable thing to do is to protect Muslims, because Muslims have managed to paint themselves as the victims. So it, a lot of people think they're doing something good, they're doing something right by protecting Muslims, because they think that this is something like what the Germans did to the Jews 80 years ago. But it's not. What, what I'm doing is, and I've explained this as well, this is self-defense. I am defending myself against the onslaught of Islam using lies and deceit. That is, it's, it's very easy to understand, very easy to see. What do you want? What is... I want you to stop lying. That's all I want. I mean, if, if you need a God to get you through the day, that's, that's cool. But why do you need to tell other people lies? Why do you need to tell people that there is not a single mistake in the Quran? Why do you need to tell people that the Quran has never been changed? Why do you do that when you know full well that this is wrong? You know this is wrong. And you are telling people the opposite because you are trying to deceive them. And that is the very definition of a lie. So you lie and deceive people by trying to get them to join your club and then if they don't read the fine print and they join, if they want to leave, they need to be killed. I mean, this is, this is crazy what you're doing. So what I want you is to stop lying. You can tell people, look, um, yeah, you, you need to go and you know, do these funny rituals. You have to hit your head on the floor five times a day. You, you're not allowed this. You're not allowed to eat pork. You're not allowed to have sex. You're not allowed this. Da, da and all these things, and you need to be afraid all the time that you're doing something wrong because nobody really understands Islam, nobody understands the Quran, nobody understands the guidance. So you need to be afraid all the time that you're doing something wrong and that this God who tells you that you need to be afraid of it or her or him or whatever is going to punish you. And the punishment is not, you know, it's not, not, not a, a small thing. It's, you're going to be tortured for eternity according to what this God tells you. And you are telling people, no, don't worry, just, just, come, just pull in, pull in, cousin, we'll make a plan. No, man, that doesn't work. The point of writing books about God, what is the point of debating, lecturing? What is the point of all of this? Now, if you... It's very easy. It's, it, it is self-defense. It is telling people, listen, watch out. I don't tell people, listen, you, you, you can't ever do this. I'm not telling people what to do. I'm just suggesting, listen, go and look into this. Go and think first. And the, the, the Muslims who are in there, I'm, I'm trying to get them to think. That's all I'm doing. I'm just saying, listen, think about what you're doing. Think about what, what the, um, the message is, what the teachings are. And, and if you say, well, Muhammad was such a great guy, well, hang on, um, there's a lot of things that were not great about him. Now, how, how do you square the circle? How can you tell me, well, he was the, the role model for all times and is the, the role model still today, when at the same time, he, he, got, he, he raped, he, he pillaged, he plundered, he attacked, he tortured, he, he beheaded, he killed, he, he did so many things that today we just simply don't do, that Muslims don't do. Muslims don't keep slaves. Muhammad did. Muslims don't behead people, Muhammad did. They don't rape women, Muhammad did. So there's a lot of things that are wrong here. And all I personally, what I am doing is pointing this out. And I'm asking questions. I'm asking Muslims questions about their ideology. Now, if they cannot answer, Funny enough, then, I am the one who is labelled as Islamophobe. I am the one who is labelled as spewing hatred. When I am doing exactly the opposite. Ask me, what's the point of me preaching Islam? 
I'll be very clear and direct. I'll say, firstly, Islam is a religion which calls towards the worship of God. God... Exactly. Why would I worship something that does not exist? The, you, you can't show me the existence of any gods or goddesses or any, anything supernatural. So you need to blindly believe that this thing exists and then you need to worship it. Come on, this doesn't make sense. It's a God for crying out loud. Why would a God need humans? I mean, we, this, this is some speck of dust somewhere in the universe and there are some, some things, some life forms on this, this planet and we need to worship this God? That's crazy. How narcissistic do you have to be that you have creatures that are so beyond or so limited compared to yourself? This is like me, you know, making an ant farm and then expecting the ants to worship me. That's crazy. Transcendent beyond our imagination. Beyond our imagination. What, what does transcendent mean? What does it mean this God is transcendent? You, you're throwing around words and they don't make any sense. And nothing like the creation and all of our life should be based upon the worship of the creator what does worship Why? mean it means love hope fear trust everything is for god alone Why? and so on and so forth it's very clear the purpose of life i mean what does this god do for me zulch nothing nada it's quite the opposite we, we are now being um like like really treated like shit where we can't do what we want because of this stupid corona now this coronavirus shows us that there are no gods this is very, very clear, because if there were gods, there should be some sort of a, um, I don't know, preferential treatment for the people who are worshipping the right god. Because we have, I don't know, two, three thousand different gods, there must be some people who are worshipping the right god. Okay, so if the right god sees these people, he should give them preferential treatment when it comes to, for example, um, to, I don't know, a plane crash, a, a tsunami, or, or the, well, the coronavirus. So they should be spared, so there should be one group which somehow is not affected by this at all. Now, why does this not happen? Why is it that if, if you have a plane crash and everybody dies, well, then everybody dies? You don't have one group coming out of their plane saying, oh, that, that was fun, let's do it again. That simply does not happen. And this shows anybody who's you know, thinking about this, there is no God. We worship God alone, the purpose of life is to uh, seek the approval and the love of God. It's very... How can you do that? How, this God created you. He, he knew in advance what will happen to you. This, this, you believe that this God has all knowledge. So how can you get anything? You can't, because he already knew. He created you this way. It's silly to think like this. This is really childish. Yeah, what I'm calling to. What on earth are you calling to? What do you... I am not calling to anything. I'm just asking questions of Muslims, why it is that they believe what they believe, just to find out why they believe this, because I'm curious about this, because come on, at the end of the day, if, you are, if, if you've got something that is real, if you've got something that is correct, I need to know about this, because then I'm really playing with my, my afterlife, and I'm really playing with my eternity, if these things really exist. But so far, nobody's been able to show me this, nobody has been shown, been, been able to, to even indicate any such thing. The only thing I get is, well, you can't explain the origins of the universe and therefore God. What? That, that is silly. That's childish. Like, imagine you get a salesperson that knocks on your door and they're like, all right, mate, you know, thank you for opening the door. But I don't really have, I don't have anything to sell. Um, that is why I don't go around knocking on doors. That is why you go around knocking on doors. You go, you put up stands, you go and you tell people you need to believe what I believe. You do that, I don't. I don't care if you want to believe a God exists, I really don't care. But don't try and lie to me and show me, yes, this is the way that it is, and if you don't believe this, you're going to be in, sh in, in deep shit, you're going to be punished, you're going to go to hell, you're going to have... I am being threatened for not believing that something that doesn't exist exists. Come on. But do you mind having a chat?
you'd be very confused. So I want to know from these atheists. No, you don't. I've told you numerous times, I've made endless number of videos on this. You are not interested. You're lying. You, 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 you're just trying to find another hook. You're trying to find another way of getting your message across so that people join your club. That's it. I'm, like, I'm calling you out. There's no way that you are honestly interested in this. You just, you're just trying to find an angle here that you can talk to people and tell them, yeah, you don't know this. You need to be afraid. What if you're wrong? This is silly, but you do it anyway. Like, what is it? Like, what, what, what are you calling to? So there's no meaning, there's no purpose, there's no ultimate existential reason why we're here. So, oh, absolutely. What are you talking about? I've tried to explain this to you. You know that this, what you are saying now, that this is wrong. You know this because it's been explained to you several times. And I've demonstrated all the things, all the consequences that arise out of not believing God exists. You have the ability to think clearly. You have the ability to think critically. You have rationality on your side. You're allowed to ask questions. You have truth, you have honesty, you have ethics, you have all these different things available to you which you don't have if you are a Muslim. You are not allowed to admit that there are mistakes in the Quran, even if there are mistakes in the Quran. You will lie. I don't have that. If I am wrong, I will admit that I am wrong. I will try and update my knowledge base and try and learn from this. This is how I learn by other people showing me that I am wrong. This doesn't work with you. So you are not interested in what I am asking for or what I stand for. You're not interested in the least. All you want is to get more people in there so for your own selfish purposes so that you get more points. What? What is it exactly? If you think you have an answer, comment below. And um... why would I comment below when you are when you are censoring the comments? Why would I comment? But when if, if you don't like a comment, you're going to delete it. What is the point of commenting when nothing that I say is going to get through? Everything is is first scanned and, and look, well, is it negative? Is it dangerous? Is it something that will challenge me? Oh, no, I don't want that. Let me delete it. You're not interested in opinions of others. You're only interested in your own echo chamber. You're interested in hearing only what you like. You're only looking for one thing, and that is confirmation. If somebody does not confirmation, they are a hater. They are an Islamophobe. They are, I don't know, all these funny things that, that you come up with just to avoid having a discussion with them. I'd like to invite you to a live stream. Even worse. I openly have an admission by another Muslim apologist who openly says, I am blocked, I am not wanted there, I'm not allowed to go there because they are scared. I have a message, a PM, by somebody who says, I am blocked on all of their, um, their streams. So I have several indications. If, if I go and watch myself using a different account, watching a stream, and I'm commenting on the stream and people are reacting to me. And suddenly on the other account, I can see that my comments I'm making are no longer visible because somebody blocked me. This happened a few days ago. So what are you talking about? You are dishonest, you're an active liar, and now you're saying, well, why don't you come and talk to me? When if somebody does come and talk to you, you block them, ban them. What's the point? Why, why are you doing that? If I tell you, well, why don't you come and talk to us? Well, you're too scared because you don't have control over the microphone. You don't have control over the censorship buttons. You cannot control what is being said there. And if you are being pushed against the ropes and you need to justify yourself, that is the situation that you're going to be in. But you can't handle that. That is why you will not come to somebody else and talk to them. You wait for people to come to you where you have control over the microphone and you can kick them, ban them, and then afterwards split up the videos and then delete all the things you don't like. That is what a dishonest person does. So you are dishonest to the core. And that is what you're doing. And then you're coming here in a video looking like shit, by the way, and then coming and saying, oh, why don't you come talk to me? I'm interested. No, you're not. You're lying. I will simply give you the platform
No, you will not. And uh, allow you to just talk to me. Because in no, 10 no, years, no. I haven't got an answer. Maybe you can provide one. I just want to know, what do you want? I want to know, what do you want? Stop lying. This is somebody who's not an honest. There's, there's not a, I don't know, not a shred of, of integrity or anything in, in this, this person's brain. He, he just wants to score. He just wants to, you know, create a gotcha moment when he says, well, how about this? How about I mean, I, I know what he does. I know his tactics. And I would, I'm still, you know, this is, I'm stupid, really. I still want to talk to these people. I still think, I still believe that there is some good in them. There's, there's, there's something there that, that um, you know, I can, I can somehow open up to make them think, to, to make them ponder, reflect, and, and then apply maybe just a basic or a tiny element of, of critical thinking. And that's why I'm doing this. And that's why he's not. And that is why I invite people over without any kind of censorship, without any kind of, um, you know, stopping or, or, or curbing their, their free speech. And he does. That is the different the difference. Sorry. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.